Greetings my fellow dingbats. Welcome back to another one of my uh, videos and it has been a while but today I'll be um, discussing, okay so here we have two everyday power supplies now, you're stuck between a crossroads and whether to choose the cheap one which is I'll say $50 for 500 watts or a uh, hundred dollars for 500 watts. Now, it seems like there is no difference, right? Well, let me just tell you. First up, you pay for what you get. So, as being the most critical part of your computer, the power supply is the foundation of your computer. If you buy a bad one, I kid you not, there are people who have burnt their houses down with these if they buy, like, really bad ones. But, well, with this one, this is a channel well technology um, power supply it's pretty old so um, like back in the day this company didn't make very uh, reputable power supplies but they did well make them recently just recently like pretty decently and pretty good too well um all right we're gonna take this apart and compare it hand to hand with an Antec power supply which is visibly much more dense and extremely heavy. This is like it was effortless. Look at that. Look at this. You can tell this is like what 500 grams. This is like two kilograms nearly. Oh yeah. Just by looking through the fan grill, you can probably see that there is barely anything in this. Even the heat sinks are pretty tiny. It doesn't have a uh, switch. Uh, I'm assuming it's automatic. Oh no. There's only one setting on this. And uh, this one actually has a switch. That's like the most basic part for quality. Like, well, nowadays they have an automatic switch, but yeah. Well, if you look into the fan here, you can see that there is actually like quite a lot of stuff. You can't, you can't really see daylight at the end of it, can you? No. But this is a 350 watt power supply. This here, Antec. Whilst on the other hand, this is only a. Uh, there's a 400 watt advertised power supply. Good question. Which one should you choose? Does it really deliver the uh, advertised payload? Let's find out. Here we just take apart these uh, power supplies and it's simply undoing these screws. Now, if you can see clearly here, there is a um, warranty sticker that I heed no attention to. Because after all, who cares about warranty? It's been like. I don't know, freaking 10 years since the release of this power supply, so I'm guessing unless it has lifetime warranty, it doesn't have any. Okay, so that's the Antec done. Now for the channel well. This is most definitely going to be sped up. Now a striking similarity here is that both the screws and the power supply have an identical pitch and thread. I'm pretty sure they're interchangeable. I'll explain later why this is the case. Seal. I love doing this. This proves how badass you are. Avoiding warranty since day one. So it needs warranty, am I right? Or am I right? Here is the Antec Smart Power 350 watt. Now, now look at the sheer density and the size of those heat sinks. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's got like even the input here. It's visibly filtered. It's something. Oh no, I think that's a switch. Oh no, there's like a, a freaking single resistor in here. And then um, some filter caps. It's not as dense that you might expect, but this is definitely really dense. 
like the component wise speaking it's not that great and oh then there's a few leaking capacitors in there as well but this is still quite happily churning out 350 watts so I don't know what the problem is here like I've been using this for a long time but oh. let me see if I can find it ah there we go CWT Channel Well Technology is exactly the same brand as this and the funny thing is Antec is much more reputable so what they used to do this Channel Well Technology they used to make um, power supplies and they still do they make it for really reputable companies now uh, they don't generally sell their own power supplies so when they do they just sell cheap ones like this this one as soon as I plugged in the power cable well keep in mind this was like, like 10 years old or something when I got it uh, salvage from a computer in the corner. Screw that warranty, there's no point for that. It's a piece of crap anyway. Look at the measly size of those things. 400 watts, they said. 400 watts. It's 2005. That is old. Let's see what went wrong. Something exploded in the shower of sparks and freaking just went all over the place. Oh, I think it's the fuse. Look at that. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably shorting out somewhere, honestly. I don't see anything else that's broken. Oh yeah. It's the sheer density of components on this board. The size of that cap of that is really tiny. Compared to this. This is much larger. Visibly. And um... What are brands here? I'm not really sure about that. Doesn't seem bad. Find a niche call or something. It looks like this is like one of the older Antex. Like Antec didn't used to have that good of a power supply reputation, I'd say. But nonetheless, it's pretty reliable, like running with a broken capacitor. I don't know what the hell this is, but it definitely doesn't look like a reputable supplier for a capacitor. Let's see if we can find one. They're all Chinese. I'm betting you. So this is no filtering there, it's just like a single fuse. Where are the line filters? Well hey, at least they use like actual freaking good sized diodes for a bridge rectifier I'm assuming. That should be what it is. Let's see here. I can't even see. Ah, uh, this is probably the full bridge rectifier, full wave, I mean. Look at that. It's already there. That's a proper piece of work. And uh, the sheer size of the heat dissipation heat sinks compared to this, and just compares. Look at the quality of this. Like, this would have costed a, um... This would be your $500 model 500 watt. Wait, no. The, the $100 uh, model 500 watt. And this would have been the $50 500 watt power supply, let's say. So, next time you're going to the supermarket to buy your uh, power supply in the groceries lane, please buy something that costs good and is visibly, preferably, bronze, silver, gold, or platinum rated. Otherwise, just go for um, an Antec or a Seasonic or. Yeah, what well, was the other one? No, there was another one. Hold on, let's see if I can find some of the pole here. Uh, should be this. Let's find the 80 plus thing. That's really important. And this is like the Silverstone power supply. Yeah, and that's a really good one too. Rosewells, the, uh, well, the newer Rosewells, the older ones are complete crap. Um, definitely you go and go for a Kentech power supply like I did when I was like a 12 year old kid. Look at that. Side by side comparison. Even the sheer size of that, look! So much longer than that, and this is 400 watts apparently. What can you say? It's got two fans for 350 watts, it's only got one. It's got tiny heat sinks. I'm surprised it didn't overheat. 
But yep, that is the end for today, and uh, if you like this video, please drop a like or I will drop you, and um, otherwise, if you want to subscribe, please do, as it really is appreciated. Otherwise, uh, this is the computer I'm currently working on, some piece of crap I picked off of the street, except it's got a 500 gigabyte power... No, 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 not power supply, it's a 500 gigabyte hard disk, which is a pretty fun find. A dual core CPU from the ages past, and a 1 gigabyte stick of the also RAM. I'm getting chuck on a graphics card there, which I will probably do once I finish up with this video. And yeah, I will see you next time, where I will explore the contents of people's hard drives, which is a bit, um, privacy violating, but they've got some really interesting stuff on there. Not personal, it's just like, weird stuff. Questionable things. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and see you later.